name is Libby Wickland and I'm one of the admissions advisors here at Inver Hills. Working with our incoming students, it's really clear to us here in this department that the financial component is a huge factor for students as they decide whether or not college is the right choice for them. Um, a lot of students, we see that they think the best solution is to max out all of the loans that they're eligible for every semester so that they're able to pay for tuition, buy their books, and just maintain their lives, their cars, their housing, childcare. Um, and for a lot of students, making that choice is really going to be a detriment after they graduate and realize they have to pay those loans back. We really appreciate here in this department that at Inver Hills, we have a lot of other opportunities to um, provide to students to help them with their financial stability as students, whether it's scholarships, tuition match, um, emergency assistance. I love the tuition match program and we see a lot of students, once they realize that it exists, they're super excited to get started. I recently helped a student for the spring semester. She was moving from Texas and had very limited support from outside of kind of just herself as a 19 year old student. And we were able to get her set up with the account. Already in her first week, she had put some money into that savings account. And thanks to other opportunities like Tuition Match, she didn't have to take any loans out for her first semester of college. Um, I'm very appreciative that we have people on this campus who feel like it's important to support these types of programs and as a donor myself, I love when I see students coming in utilizing um, the opportunities that we have. My name is Anthony and I teach English in Inver Hills. Uh, I think it's easy when thinking about scholarships to deal with them in terms of numbers and the numbers of people who are needy. But my story is about Colette uh, who shows to me that there is many stories of need and merit as there are people. Uh, Colette was a student who showed great promise uh, she was almost preyed upon by her parents because they took her graduation money, took her credit cards, she showed up at Denver Hills homeless and broke. And while that may seem to be one story in the Naked City, she made so much of herself through two classes of mine through a year and a half here at Inver Hills on an Inver, Inver Hills scholarship. Uh, she left here and transferred to River Falls. She ended up TAing over there. She was so successful, but she doesn't show up in the normal count of numbers, and her success isn't easily measured which is why I want you to know about her. I think she's so deserving. I'm so glad that even though Inver Hills wasn't her first course, uh, she ended up here and we could help her get to the next step. I'm Barb Kerchak and I teach psychology here at Inver Hills Community College. I wanna tell you about one of my students, Jenny. Jenny decided that she wanted to do community-based learning for her lifespan development class, where we're studying how people change across the lifespan, from womb to tomb, as they say. And Jenny wanted to come out to the garden and work with people from Inver Hills and Metro State to give food and grow food for food shelves. And she asked me, hey, is it okay if I bring my son with me? And I said, sure, you know, that's great. We want people from every age group working together to give food to our community. And so she brought her son and it was a hot day and uh, it was in the middle of summer and we were harvesting cabbage that day. And her son had never worked in a garden before. And he uh, was harvesting cabbage and the cabbage was big. It was almost as big as his head. It was really hard for him to, to actually harvest it. But when he did, he couldn't believe that something had grown quite so big as as he and um, and so she asked at the end of the experience if she could be one of the people to donate the food actually to the food shelf and I said sure and so they donated it was about 75 pounds of food that day that they donated to one of our local uh, food shelf partners and her son couldn't believe that people didn't have food it, totally changed my students' experience with her whole family um, and also her career. Her son said, Mom, it's my birthday in a couple of weeks. Let's not ask for presents. Let's ask for, uh, for food to be given to food shelves. And then the family's Christian. When it turned to Christmas time, he said, Mom, let's not give presents to each other. Let's donate. Uh, there are different um, organizations that will donate animals to uh, communities that don't have animals to raise milk for instance and so the family donated internationally to be able to help with food security issues and now my student who was in my lifespan development class is finishing up a bachelor's degree in social work so 
I think about how formative that community garden experience was for her and it keeps me donating every paycheck. Thank you for your gift. Last year we had 60% participation during our employee giving campaign. And this year, St. Paul College has challenged us to a duel. Which college can get the highest percentage of employees to participate? The winning college can display a traveling trophy for a year. We can do it. Let's double down for Inver and beat St. Paul College. And not just for the prize, although that's pretty awesome. But let's do it for our students. Thanks.